early on the first day of the week while it was still dark. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been rolled away. For the tomb was empty. Thank you. The tomb was empty. And today we celebrate this very best news of the gospel, that he is risen. He is risen indeed. We give thanks for our life together. Welcome to Morrisville Presbyterian Church for this Easter worship. Whether you are a longtime member or visiting us for the first time or for the first time in a while, we welcome you. It is a joy to be worshiping with you this day. Whether you are worshiping here with us in the sanctuary or worshiping with us from home, it is a delight to worship with you this day, and we give thanks for our life together and the opportunity to worship our risen Lord here today. If you are here in our sanctuary, there is a red folder. We invite you to take that, note your presence with us, pass it to your neighbors so they can do the same. If you are visiting and would like us to follow up on your time here today, we would love to do that. We just ask that you include enough information so that we can do that faithfully in the week to come. I just want to draw your attention to the one great hour of sharing offering that's being received today, a wonderful opportunity to care for God's people in God's world. There are details about that offering in your bulletin. We hope you will give generously to support that good work in our world. Friends, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us worship the risen Christ together. Hallelujah. Amen. Please stand as you are able and let us join together in our responsive call to worship as it is found in your bulletin. Rejoice and be glad. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad. Heaven and earth will never be the same. Rejoice and be glad. Let us share the good news with all the world. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. Let us continue our Easter praise this morning by singing the hymn 232, Jesus Christ is risen today.
Friends, in raising Jesus from the grave, God shattered the power over sin and death. So let us come before our God confessing our sin so that each one of us may receive God's mercy and evermore live with Christ in the joy of his resurrection. Let us pray together the prayer of confession as it's printed in your bulletin. All-knowing, all-powerful God, we confess that even as a most holy day, we are unable to believe in the victory of death shown to us in the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. We confess our utter dependence on you, not only for life, but also for faith, hope, and love. Without your astonishing appearance to our ancestors and your stunning presence throughout the ages, we would be lost. Forgive us and transform us, that in every way our work in this world and our prayer for your world to come will be made whole as broken and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Listen, beloved church, by the grace of God and the witness of our ancestors, the good news of Jesus' resurrection is our rock and our salvation. God who raised Jesus from the dead has not given us over to death, but instead restored us to new life. And so together, let us proclaim the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Having confessed our sin to Christ, we are reconciled with him and be at peace. And now let us pass the peace of Christ to one another. Our tradition here in the last several months has been to use American Sign Language, which is the peace of Christ be with you all. And the response is, and also with you. So please pass the peace. And today, if you want to give a little fist bump or an elbow bump, it's okay, but the peace of Christ be with you all and also with you. as we come to hear the words of scripture, let us pray. God of life, you raised Jesus from the dead. Your spirit inspired the prophets and writers of scripture your spirit draws us closer to Christ and helps us to acknowledge him as Lord. We ask that the Holy Spirit now give us a deeper insight, give us encouragement and faith, 
give us hope through the proclamation of the Easter message. Set our hearts on fire, O God, for you, and send us all on our way rejoicing. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Now hear the words written in the book of Isaiah, the 65th chapter. Words about the flourishing renewal of the cosmos. And here we have the words of God. For I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered nor come to mind. Be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years will be considered as a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of the trees shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their own hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children in calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before I call, before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I'd love to invite my young friends forward for our time for young disciples. Hi, Tucker. Why don't you sit down here today, okay? I'm going to ask everyone to sit. Hi, Harrison. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Easter. You're a pig? Oh, goodness. I had no idea. Good morning, Rory. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, bud. Good morning. Happy Easter. Good morning, Rafaela. Good morning. It is wonderful to see all of you. We have a few more friends coming. This is a great day. But I'm a little confused. What day is it? Easter. Easter. And I have my Easter basket here today. Maybe. Oh, okay, you're right, Tucker. Okay, can't take all the my, my uh, stardom today, okay? Don't take quite all of it away. We have a big surprise today. I brought my Easter basket again today. But this is a little different from the Easter basket that you all might have had in your house this morning. Do you remember what, whose story this basket tells? Jesus, the story of Jesus. So I'm going to ask for your help again to tell this whole wonderful story. We have six eggs in here today. Last week we only had four eggs, but today we have six. So I know we just opened four. You're right. There were six. Okay. So egg number one, Lincoln, can you help us out with that? Let us know what's in egg number one. 
a baby pet. Well, we have a baby here too. This is perfect because Jesus came as a baby. Jesus came as a baby. That's right. And so we have a perfect demonstration here today. This is what it was like when Jesus was born. And egg number two, McKinley, you want to open that one? Egg number two, Jesus came to, well, what shape is that? What's in there? Hearts. Jesus came to what? Love. Jesus came to love. That's right. Number three, Tucker, you want to do that one? Egg number three, what's in there? Palms. And what do we, do you remember what happened? Um, when he walked into Jerusalem on a donkey and they were saying, Hosanna. Precisely. They, Jesus was walking into Jerusalem on a donkey and they were shouting Hosanna. That's what we celebrated last week on Palm Sunday, right? Egg number four. You want to do that one? What's in egg number four, Harrison? What shape is it? Can you unfold it a little bit? A cross. Very good, because Jesus died on a cross. We remember that. It was a sad, sad day. That was last Friday. Rory, would you like to do one for us? This is egg number five. You let us know what's in that egg. What is it? A rock, like a stone, because when Jesus died, he was put in the tomb and that stone was rolled, a big, big stone was rolled in front of the tomb. But on Sunday, but on Sunday morning, which was this morning, when the women went to the tomb, that same stone had been rolled away because, would you like to do egg number six for us? Do you want to open that up for us, sweetie? Because egg number six, oh, what's in that one? Nothing. It's empty because the tomb was empty. Because Jesus was alive. Yeah. And it's also because he left open the tomb. Okay, and he left open the tomb. Well, that does happen too, I guess, when you're resurrected. But Jesus rose from the dead. You all can put your eggs back in here so they're not too much of a distraction. And this is the whole story of Jesus that we love to tell. Every. It's a, okay. Every part of this story is an important part of the story of Jesus. And today on Easter, we celebrate that the tomb was empty. Jesus was alive. And that is news we are called to shout from the rooftops and say, remember, I asked them for their, let's see, let's give them some practice, see if they can do this. We say, he is risen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. That's right. It is such good news, and we share that. So your job today is to go home, and maybe you'll have Easter eggs somewhere at home, and you can even put numbers on them, and you can put these things in them. Exactly. And you could create this whole story and tell the whole story to your family about how Jesus came as a baby. He came to love. He came to Jerusalem on a donkey with palms. He, was, he died on a cross, was buried in a tomb. A big stone covered that tomb, and it was rolled away. Because this morning, the tomb was empty, and Jesus was alive. And that's a great story we continue to tell. So let's pray together. You all can repeat after me. Dear God, we thank you for the story of Jesus. Help us to tell that story for all the world to hear. Amen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Now, we don't have music today with Mr. Carpenter, but you may go back and sit with your parents, or you may go to the nursery. That is open today, too.
Our second scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Listen for the word of the Lord. Early, on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be a gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him. I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together again. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us this day. Melt us, mold us, fill us, and use us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. And to that end, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It is no secret in my home that Matt, my husband, is the gardener, and I am not. I don't have the patience for gardening like he does. He knows I'm good for an afternoon of weeding every now and then. 
But that's because I appreciate having something to show for all my work at the end of a sweaty afternoon. Seeds planted in the dark earth with no blossom or bloom to show for them just isn't my idea of an enjoyable day. But Matt will spend hours in the garden. He'll spend hours researching seeds and plants and trees and hours tilling the soil, planting whatever he has planned for the season. In fact, last year when Matt's health and life were hanging in the balance and we did not know which way the scale would tip, Matt was going outside to garden nearly every day it was possible. Reminded of the words of Martin Luther who said, if I knew the world was going to end tomorrow, I would still plant my apple tree. His gardening is a gift to our family, and most of the time I can see it that way. I don't mind the gardening when it stays outside in the garden, when the bulbs are planted, the weeds are pulled, the soil is prepared for another crop. I do mind a little when the gardening comes inside by way of muddy shoes at the door or soil-covered hands washed in the white kitchen sink or kitchen counters covered with bulbs or seeds, or through a very satisfied and happy, muddy dog that needs her paws washed once again because she's been outside helping. But I give thanks for Matt's gardening every time those tulips bloom, every time the pear tree begins to flower, and I am reminded of his gardening every time I look at his hands this time of year because I can often see traces of that work in the garden stuck under his fingernails. Early on the first day of the week, through her sobs of despair outside that empty tomb, Mary thought that Jesus was the gardener. It's a strange detail, one that we often gloss over, but one that has stuck with me, especially this year. Now keep in mind in the text that Alex just read, Mary first sees two angels inside the tomb. So despite her sobbing state, it's hard to believe that she would go from angels to a gardener without feeling pretty confident in her assessment. And certainly we could interpret Mary's analysis as, well, I mean, who else would be there at that hour? But I also have a hunch that Jesus didn't look his best. At least not in the way the resurrection pictures might want us to think. He looked shining and shimmering in bright white without any indication that he'd been dead for three days. And no offense to gardeners, there is one I love very dearly in my home, but if Mary thought this man outside the tomb was the gardener, I imagine Jesus looked like someone who had perhaps been gardening, disheveled, muddy, perhaps with dirt from his own tomb under his nails. But this is not the Easter picture we like to paint. One covered in, in these heaving sobs, this confusion, this, this mud, this, this dirt. Rather, this is the Easter picture we like to paint. One with flowers and brass and new Easter dresses or an Easter hat, a picture, friends, we haven't been able to paint quite so beautifully since 2019 which was the last time we were in this sanctuary for Easter. Alex, in fact, who has been here as our associate pastor for two and a half, over two and a half years, has never been in this sanctuary for Easter until today. So happy Easter, Alex. <laughs> happy. So after two years of being removed from our sanctuary for Easter, I confess I was a bit put off this week when I reread words that I love, but they hit me in a new way. Words written by Nadia Boltz Weber, which to be fair were, wit were written well before the pandemic, but they hit a particularly sensitive nerve for me in the wake of the pandemic and especially in preparation for today. 
She wrote, again, years before the pandemic, she wrote, for many churches, Easter has become this version of church show-off day. A time when we spiff up the building, fill it with flowers, hire a brass quartet, and put on fabulous hats, and do whatever we have to do to impress all the visitors. To me, it had always kind of felt like the church's version of putting out the guest towels. You know, the towels we can't use on a regular day. The towels that are just there for the guests. Which makes no sense. She says, Easter is not a story about new dresses and flowers and spiffiness and things that sparkle. Really, it's a story about flesh and dirt and bodies and confusion. And it's about the way God never seems to adhere to our expectations of what a proper God would do. As in not get himself killed in a totally avoidable way. It's as if Jesus needed to be cleaned up for the Easter visitors. So he looked more impressive, so no one would be offended by the truth of what transpired. But then what we all end up with is a perverted idea of what resurrection really looks like. A perverted idea of who Jesus was and is. As I said, they didn't feel great this week, her words. It being our first Easter back in this space and all, I was excited for the brass and the flowers and still am. But on some level, I knew she was on to something. In this cleaned up, spotless, sparkling and shining idea of resurrection, we forget all that Jesus did, all that he came to do that was never cleaned up or spotless or sparkling or nice. We forget that Jesus was first housed in the body of a poor, unimportant young girl who no one had ever heard of. That he was born in a smelly, dirty stable and wrapped in whatever was available. We forget that he came to love and in doing so spoke with people he wasn't supposed to speak to, ate with people he should never have been seen with, and we forget that it was through dirt and spit that he healed And in his broken, bleeding body, that death itself was conquered. We forget these things when we make everything sparkle. And we forget that he did all of these things for you and for me, you and me, who may look pretty sparkling and cleaned up and spotless and shiny today. But you and me, who are also drowning in the darkness of grief or illness or depression or debt you can't get out from under or or addiction that keeps wreaking havoc in your life or secrets that are breaking you in pieces or marriages that are falling apart or diagnoses you can't escape or children who don't want to speak to you or, or parents who are aging so fast you don't recognize them anymore or fatigue My God, fatigue so overwhelming from these last two years that we wonder if we'll ever know joy on a regular basis again. When Mary arrived at that tomb, she arrived drowning in so many of these same things. Early on that first day of the week, while it was still dark, while it was still dark, while it was still dark, Mary arrived only looking for something that was dead. She arrived only looking for death, only looking for all that was wrong in the world, carrying the pain and suffering she had known in its wake. Why else would she travel to the cemetery? But outside that tomb, she didn't find death. She found life. She found resurrection life, but it was resurrection life that still had dirt under its fingernails. Because, friends, the truth that we boldly claim today is that the God of resurrection The God who brings life out of death isn't satisfied with making us good or nice or clean or shiny. God is about making us new. 
and new in God's sense of the word hardly ever looks perfect. Nadia Boltz Weber goes on to say, like the Easter story itself, new is often messy. New still has dirt under its fingernails. New looks like recovering alcoholics. New looks like reconciliation between family members, neither of whom deserve it. <coughs> New looks like every time, excuse me. <coughs> New looks like every fresh start and every act of forgiveness and every moment of letting go of what we thought we couldn't live without and then somehow living without it anyway. New is the thing we never saw coming, never even hoped for, but ends up being what we needed all along. It happens to all of us. God simply keeps reaching down into the dirt of our humanity and resurrecting us from the graves that we dig for ourselves. In our violence, our lies, our selfishness, our arrogance, our addictions. And God keeps loving us back to life over and over. <coughs> Bishop Will Williman tells the story of a man who was, he was visiting just days before his death. And Will asked him if he was afraid. And the man responded, fear? No, I'm not fearful because of my faith in Jesus. Ah, yes. Willman replied somewhat piously, we all have hope that our future is in God's hands. Well, no, no, that's not what I meant, the man said. I'm not hopeful because of what I believe about the future. I'm hopeful because of what I've experienced in the past. I look back over my life, all the mistakes I've made, all the times I've turned away from Jesus, gone my own way, strayed and gotten lost. And time and again, he found a way to get to me. showed up and got me, looked for me when I wasn't looking for him. And I just don't think he'll let something like my dying defeat his love for me. And there, said Williman, was a man who understood Easter. A man who was a witness to the Easter truth a man who knew what it was like for the God of the universe to be willing to reach down into the mess and the dirt of his life, to keep loving him back to life over and over again. <coughs> Today, friends, the church around the world proclaims the greatest truth the world has ever known. Jesus Christ was dead, but today he is alive. It is a truth we proclaim today in our music, our scripture, our prayers, our worship. But it is also a truth we are called to proclaim every day of our lives. He is alive, and I know it because I too have been a witness. I have been a witness to this God who brings life from death. This God who still has dirt under his nails from the tomb of death because he's been willing to stoop into the dirt stoop into the dirt and the mess of our lives time and again i know he is alive because he has loved me back to life when i have needed it most <coughs> but beloved of god hear me when i say this too if this is not your story today, if you cannot proclaim this good news today, that is okay. I will proclaim it for you. 
and together the church will remind you that you are beloved of God today and always. And we will continue to proclaim this good news until it can become your own. We will continue to remind you that God can, can and always will do God's very best work in the dark and in the dirt of our lives. And we will continue to live it and proclaim it until the day you can proclaim it too. Because whether you believe it today or not, everything God has done in the last three days has been for you. Weeping may endure for the night, but the joy of the Lord comes in the morning. Because we serve a God who will reach down over and over, over and over, into the dirt and mess of our lives and keep loving us back to life again and again. Easter always rises, and so let the church testify this Easter day. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. We have heard the word read and proclaimed this day, a word of new life, of resurrected life, even with dirty fingernails. So as we seek to respond to this word, let us lift our voices in song. Please stand as you are able and join together in singing the hymn 247, Now the Green Blade Rises. Let us continue our affirmation and response to this gospel, to the God that we worship, the God that is alive in Jesus Christ. Let us affirm our faith by repeating together a section from a brief statement of faith of our denomination as is written in the bulletin. We trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed, and blessing the children, healing the sick, and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with outcasts, 
forgiving sinners and calling all to repent and believe the gospel. Unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition, Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised Jesus from, from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice that nothing in life or in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Even after death, Jesus came to those he loved. He listened to their grievances. He listened to their concerns. He sat with them. He heard them. He prayed with them. So this day, we come as we are before our risen Christ, and we pray. So let us pray now. Holy God, beyond our imagining, yet near to us as the breath we breathe, we come before you this Easter day in gratitude. We confess, O oh God, that we like to think of Easter as a sunny and warm day, full of light and sweetness, redolent of all that is fragrant in springtime. Yet no matter what the weather is outside or how we wish our Easter morning to look, we give thanks that your stone has been rolled away, that you stand before us with the dirt of life under your fingernails, that you are liberated to lift the hearts of all who call upon your name. We praise you, eternal God, that your glory has dawned on us and brought us into this day of resurrection. We rejoice that the grave could not hold your son and that he is risen to new life. We give thanks that in a world where we are constantly running towards new pursuits of fulfillment, that you are the one that calls us by name, that you meet us where we are whether it be a friendly hug, a gentle word, a prophetic voice, a miraculous resurrection. We praise you for summoning us into your own new life to follow you with joy and gladness. We worship you, Jesus Christ, our Savior. You are the stone rejected by the builders, and you have become the cornerstone. So make all of us living stones in your church. We pray for those who flock to services on this Easter morning and those who hear your word at home through a screen. May we all live in the joy of the resurrection and be a visible sign of your presence by mutual love. We pray for the leaders of the church and the world that as we celebrate your resurrection with all your servants, may they turn away from greed and cynicism and instead be called to walk your path of true justice and true peace. We pray for all who are suffering, those who are suffering from illness or violence, grief, old age, and the many prayers we hold on our, in our hearts this day. May your resurrection be a source of comfort and a call to us all to seek your kingdom here on earth. By your Spirit, O God, guide our eyes to see what is no longer laying down on the ground, but what has been raised in mystery and glory. Lift us from doubt and despair and set our feet on Christ's holy way. 
inspire our lives so that they may be signs of Jesus' life and that all we have may be shown forth in his love. We pray all these things in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our living God has given us so much. Hope, joy, peace, and above all, God has given us life. What can we do in return? If the whole world were ours, it would not be enough. So what little we have this day, we humbly offer to our God. So let us this morning give our tithes and offerings. pray. Risen Christ, your garden is full and abundant before us. We offer our gifts this morning as a sign of your gracious love and tokens of our grateful heart. May we use them to greater glory, wholeness, and love. In your holy name, amen. As you are able, please remain standing and join together in singing our final hymn, 
248, Christ is risen, shout Hosanna. Beloved church, he is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us go out into the world to share that very best news. And as you go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, be with those you love, and with those you are called to love, this day and forevermore. And together we say, Amen. Amen.